Good, Good morning, morning, everyone. Welcome to the family room. Welcome to the family room. We are inviting you into our family room this morning. And I think, what is this week number 12 that uh, we have yeah, been? Yeah, something like um, that, yeah. And not been able to meet together as a church family anyway. But we want you to just join us. We want you to come in and relax with us and just be open. And, and I believe God's just going to minister to all of us this morning as yes. Terry and I talk. And, and yeah. it, as we encourage each other, we hope it encourages you. Yeah. Make sure that you have your... Uh, water or your copy or, or Terry's got some by and make sure you just are in a space that that you can just be open to what the Holy Spirit's going to do in our conversation with right. you this morning yeah. because even though we can't see you we're embracing you into our conversation this morning Robin yeah. uh, I, I just want to remind everybody the reason why we exist at Turning Point Church and we are going to be going back pretty soon to our church building but the reason why we exist is is to change the way people see God. Right. And that's what we talk that's about a lot. It's what we've been talking about yeah. for the last 12 weeks is having the right view of God. So once we begin to change our view and opinion of what we think God is like, and we're all growing in that, then we begin to change our view and opinion of ourselves. Oh, man, yes. And then once we change the view and the opinion of ourselves, then we begin to look at others totally differently. Yeah, and, and um, how, how even more important, Terry, than what's happening in the events of our world right now. Right. Man, it's, it, it makes all of our hearts so heavy yeah. to witness what's going on. And, and it can feel scary. I mean, it feels like, ah, oh, it's unsettling. I guess maybe it's the word that I want to say. It is so unsettling to watch what's going on. And Terry and I were talking about this, you know, earlier today and last night and just over the course of this whole week and how important it is, yeah. you know, that God wants to change us from the inside out. Yeah. You know, it, it is never about just, we can't just change people's behavior. Behavior is a result of what we believe. What we believe about God, ourselves oh and other people. Yeah. You know. And because it, it does, it so starts with how we view God. And, yeah. and that's what we've been talking. It's so important to, that we look at what Jesus came and modeled, yeah. which was he is wall-to-wall -wall love. His yeah. retaliation was never anger. His retaliation was love. Yeah. And, and like we were yeah. talking, it's like we, it's not that we don't take a stand because right. we believe we have to take a stand for what's, what's right. But it's how we do it. It's how we do yeah. it. It is how we do it. And, and when... So, Robin, well, that brings me to our series. This is part three of Last Days or a New Day. And I was just thinking about this a little bit earlier, is that 10 years ago, if you would have asked me about the events of our moment right now, I would have said we were living in the last days. Yeah. But the last 10 years for you and I have been absolutely revolutionary yeah. in, all, in all areas of our thinking. And we're continuing to change. Uh, but today, I see the events that are going on around us, the coronavirus, the, all the of the, the riots, yeah. uh, the happening. things that are going on, you know, um, with uh, Mr. Boyd being killed. And, you know, I just think that uh, it's all of our view of things. I think that we are, we are believing and we are speaking things into existence in, in this earth realm that could absolutely be different because 10 years ago i believe we were living in the last days today i believe we've been living in a new day for 2000 years under the reign of king jesus who is living on the inside of us who is total and complete love and if we would ever embrace the fact that peace came and lives on the inside of us as the human race it would begin to change our planet. We because, would begin to operate differently. Because one of the things that we've been talking about is that what we believe uh, will shape the choices that we make. Oh, absolutely. And the choices that we make for our family and for our jobs and for how we respond to what's going on in the earth, what we believe. And the truth is, is that we have hope. You know, yeah. before when, you know, when, when we believed that the, the, that the earth was going, the physical earth was going to come to an end and that everything was going to have to end in turmoil. Right. I would have, like you said, I would have just believed that these were the signs of the times. And right. I would have just said, my only hope 
hope at that point would have been that, that Jesus, Jesus get me out yeah, of here. Jesus take us out of the situation. Where when we believe and when we are able to look at the scriptures the right yeah. way and we believe that the last days that the scriptures were talking about was the last days of an old covenant, an old way of yeah, thinking about right. God, an old system of relating to God, and that that we are living in a new day. Now when I see what's going on in the world, I have hope. I believe yeah. I have authority. I believe I can be an influence. I believe right. the people that we have Jesus living on the inside of us and we can actually make a difference in the world. And even though there's, there's that, that um, and I make a difference by, first of all, changing how I believe. And then I begin to influence the people around me and be, and be and able to um, um, express God out of me right in in, in a loving god in a, a love love is the bottom yes. line and so yes. so robin one of the you know uh if if you view these as the last days maybe we have our terminology wrong yeah. maybe it's very possible that we had our terminology wrong yeah. and so whenever i view the last days like robin like you said i believe the last days in the scriptures we're talking about the last days of an old covenant system, yes. a way of believing, thinking, doing, and Jesus brought that all to an end. One of my, one of my favorite scriptures uh, now is Ephesians three twenty one. After Paul prays his prayer at the end of that, it says, "Unto God be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages." world without wow, end so the world isn't ending yeah. and the last days wasn't the end of a global situation that's right it was the last days of an old covenant and terry we can that means that we can have hope in our situation oh absolutely in our day yeah. that we're living in and what we see going on and that we actually have authority and we have power in our words and in our actions yeah. to bring change absolutely yeah robin i want to remind us today of something that we said last week the gospels themselves were primarily about Jesus dealing with the Jewish people yeah. and that old covenant system that they had been operating in, preparing them to transition in their thinking from an old covenant performance-based way of relating God to a new covenant that revealed that God was about relationship, that he was our father. That is what Jesus modeled to us. And that is what Jesus wants us to model to everybody around us about God. Yeah, because the, we talk about performance space, but what, what, what that was is we believed that God was transactional, that, that he was angry and upset with us when we didn't do things the right way. And when we believe God's angry with us, it's going to produce anger toward ourselves, and it's going to produce anger, anger toward towards other, other people. people. Yeah. Because if we think God is viewing us as unworthy or that, that our, only our worthiness is based upon our performance, our ability to keep a set of rules and regulations, then we're going to believe he's mad at us most all the time. Because most yeah. days, if we're really honest with ourselves we do not live up to doing everything 100 percent right right and then therefore this is going to create self-loathing and anger toward myself and, and a then sense towards of, others oh we will project that onto other we people will, and we will and i think that that so much is what's what's happening in the world today that's why we just keep even though that there was an end to that way of thinking that's why i keep we just keep um that anti-christ anti-love mindset that we believe that that begins with thinking that god's angry with with us yes. it just keeps perpetuating itself but we have hope right we have hope that god wasn't like that because yes. jesus came to give us a different way of looking at things so during this series um we're going to answer some questions but we're going to create more questions yep. but we want to equip all of us with the tools and the information that will help us look at the scriptures robin in a in a different perspective yeah and and, and so maybe it will maybe what god is wanting to do is the, to lead us into truth and so that brings me to second timothy two fifteen this yeah. morning and i used to look at this uh a lot differently but over the last well it's been a long time what, through a performance yeah, that you had basically to, yeah. that i had to do something to make myself approved so here's what it says study to show yourself approved unto god i used to think that i had to do something to make myself approved but that's not what oh, that's saying that we had to pr pray and and read and, and do all these things so that god would look at me as a will worthy, worthy of being yeah. approved of him yeah oh my gosh what a what an, uh, a, a defeating concept. Oh, man. Because we're never doing that. Because you know what, Terry? If we would have prayed 20, 
three hours. Well, out I of the did. 24? There were times back there that you I did pray like, I didn't do enough 24 still. hours in in the spirit, and and then or 23 hours, and I didn't pray the other hour, and I was I felt bad about myself because it was about a performance. It's yes. never going to be so enough. So this is whenever you go to the scriptures, you should study to show yourself that you are approved of God. Jesus showed us that in His life, in everything that He did. And so it says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. We shouldn't be ashamed. If we understand that we're approved, we shouldn't be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And I believe in the context of what we're talking about here, Robin, we're talking about an old covenant versus a new covenant. And, and mm -hmm. Jesus was pulling the Jews out of an old covenant because we weren't ever even, as Gentiles, we were never even under that old covenant. Now that creates some real issues in a lot of the way we think. But let me just say this, with us talking about the last days or a new day, uh, we, we have to have a mindset of rightly dividing the word of truth, old covenant, new covenant. There's different perspectives, but I don't believe that God ever wanted us to be in the operational mindset of that old covenant. I believe that's where we were at and that's where the Jews wanted. were at, yeah, and that's, what, that's what they wanted. And so God got in their box and worked with them. God is still getting in, in our box. I'm just saying that maybe God is way better and way bigger than what we thought he was. And that's, uh, that's pretty incredible to me. And I think one of the things that we've been talking about, that this old covenant mindset that the, that the, that the Jewish people were operating under was a very... Uh, was not inclusive of everybody. Right. And, and I think that's the thing that Jesus... They, it was a separation yeah. mindset. And I think that's what Jesus... And again, we have to look at what Jesus modeled. And Jesus was inclusive of everyone. Right. Gentiles, of women, of, of, of people who were thought to be, you know criminals and thought to be right. um, sinners and, and not and their performance stunk. I mean, he was inclusive of everybody. Absolutely. And I think that's the mindset that changes that this new day brings. Well, Robin, a new day brings a new language. A new day brings a new man. And there is only one new man in the earth, and that is the body of Christ. That is the human race. And that that is, is us. Everybody. That is everybody. And, and man, if we can grab a hold oh of my the gosh. mindset that Jesus <laughs> operated in, and that He was inclusive of everybody, and that He, and when you stop looking at whether you're worthy based on your performance, then you're going to stop looking at other people, and you're going to say, even when their performance stinks, they're worthy still. Right. They have value and they have worth. And yes, does does change and and sometimes correction and what we're doing need to come because our performance impacts ourselves and other and, people. And our performance, my performance sometimes bring, brings other people's pain, other people pain. Yes. You know, yeah. sometimes your performance bring other people pain. But, but, the, but we still, it comes back to the belief system that God loves us, that God is good, that God cares about us and loves us and places worth and value on us, not based upon what we do, but yeah. based upon that we, who we are, that we are human beings and not that, that, human doings, not human and doings and therefore when my performance stinks or when someone else's performance stinks I can still have value and worth oh, for absolutely. that person and believe that God can bring change and in fact my view of that person and how I treat that person when their performance stinks is a part of what uh, what is us being God and Christ in the earth yes absolutely as a yeah. part of what is going to help bring change to yeah. the earth yeah and yeah. that's that's uh, uh, that's the thing is that we want to produce heaven on earth. Yes. And I talk about that all the time. Uh, God wants to produce heaven on earth, and how He's going to do that is not. We're not waiting on God to do something. No. God He's is waiting on us to awaken to the reality oh gosh, so. of the new man, of the one man that is in the earth. That's Him and us joined oh, as yes. one together. That we're not good. separate. We're not divided. Now, we may be in our thinking, yes. but I believe God wants to change that. He's Regardless of what my thinking is, yes. Robin, I am still one with God. Yeah. And He loves me, yeah. and He's working with me, and He's doing that with all of us, so we should all work together. Oh my goodness, and that, that is absolutely what Jesus came to Man. demonstrate when He died on the cross, when He he said that God so loved the world that He yeah. gave His only Son, and He gave Him not to appease an angry God, right. He gave Him to 
demonstrate his complete, unabandoned, reckless love yeah, for us. For the human race. That his response to man's anger was to love. It to was lay to down his love, life. To lay down his life for us. And that is what God is wanting from us to yeah. be able to. We First of all, we got to embrace it for ourselves. Right. And then as we do, it's going to change the way we see ourselves. And then it's going to change the way we begin to respond to other people. Yeah. And that unabandoned love. Instead of anger yeah. at the things that we see going on around us and it producing and stirring up anger on the inside of us, it's going to stir up compassion for people. And, and it's going to stir up the fact that all people have value and all people have worth. Right. And it's going to begin to mold the way we respond to life around and us. And then it will change the way we live our everyday lives. And if that happens one person at a time, if we, we cannot underestimate the power that we have on the inside of us oh, what absolutely. God can do through well, us. Well, God's living in us as one with us. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, Robin, what as we're getting into this again today, I don't yeah. know how far we're going to get. No, Probably not no. too far. We never get as far as we think um, we're going to get. But um, one central truth that really began to help us view the Bible from a different perspective. I, I sometimes, you know, I want to say right perspective, but my, my thinking is constantly changing yeah. so and sometimes whenever you put yourself in a right perspective yeah. then you think okay i've already got everything yeah. i know everything but the truth is the more that i know the more that i realize that i don't know and that yeah. god is still moving me along and i think that's such a key part of just being able to to continue to grow is just to be open to well, truth it it's, keeps me humble knowing yeah. that i don't know everything yeah. yet i mean the last 10 it's years different have been absolutely humbling to my life, you know, and but also super exciting, super exciting. I mean, it's like, yeah. yes, I mean, yes, we've had to, but the Bible said, talks about it, that if we humble ourselves, that God's able to exalt us or lift us up and, and, and help us, yeah. you know, it's when we get stuck and, 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 uh, stubborn right no and, i wouldn't be stubborn yeah would oh, I? not me oh not mm -hmm. me either but you know it's like it's in those times when we humble ourselves and say god i am just open yeah that, open to truth whatever it is and that's when god's really able to work in our lives yeah absolutely yeah. so so one central truth that really helped me and robin robin and i sorry those of you that are english majors <laughs> forgive us uh, we have to understand audience relevance oh, powerful the scriptures were yeah. not written yeah. to us but were written for us for yeah. our edification for our understanding yeah. robin the bible is historical not hysterical it doesn't it shouldn't make you afraid but oh if we gosh. view it through yes. the wrong lenses there are a lot of things in the bible that will make you afraid yeah. and cause violence in your own mind yep. so but the bible is historical and i believe that uh, the New Testament was written before 70 AD and it had complete relevance to the day that it was being written. Robin, whenever I read my Bible, I'm reading someone else's mail. Yeah. I'm, yep. I'm looking at it. I can't look at it from my perspective. I have to look at it from the culture perspective of that day. Yes. So I'm going to have to study a little bit. I'm going to, I can't just read. I'm going to have to take some time to read to some understand. books and to listen yep. to other people and to get different perspectives yep. because all of us are biased towards what we have always believed. It's hard not to like read it through our perspective of our culture. That's our first like instinct or inclination is to want to read it from the perspective we're living in today and when we do that is going to bring confusion well what it does and as we get back into this what it does is that if we read it like it's written to us then it looks like we're living in the last days and then every set of circumstances just like the ones we're going through right now are going to just just going to be oh well that's just confirmation and it's going to create that. fear Instead of hope. And so, Robin, somebody asked me, and I think we have this in our notes, but I, I just feel like I should say it right now. Somebody asked me, uh, you know, well, Pastor Cherry, why as the New Testament church, as the Jews that were coming out of the Old Covenant into the New Covenant, as the Gentiles were coming in uh, to the gospel, as they were reading the New Testament, why wouldn't this have created fear in their minds? And without me going into great detail... Well, first of all, they um, didn't believe him. Right. A lot of they didn't, didn't believe, believe a lot of his stuff. Well, a lot of them perished, but there was a lot of believers that did get out of Jerusalem, that did get out of 
out of the harm's way of the Romans that were coming. But but the issue the issue was is that the Jews were persecuting the early church, the old covenant system. Like you said last week, all of the elements of that old covenant system were still intact, even though Jesus hung it on a cross and removed right. it. And they should have moved into the new covenant, but they most of them didn't. The but age. the believers that moved in got out of Jerusalem. They got out of destruction, but they were being persecuted by the Jews. Yeah by that system and so it was a relief yeah. for the believers of that day for uh, Judaism to completely be extinguished in that moment you know uh, Jerusalem was gone the priests were gone no more animal sacrifices and we haven't had animal sacrifices for 2,000 years because Jesus was the final sacrifice to bring all of that violence to a complete closure. And here we are in 2020, and we still have a huge mixture of old covenant mindset in our sonship system that we're operating in today. And that wrong view of God yeah. affects how we view ourselves and affects how we view people and creates anger. It only produces and breeds anger when we don't view God the right way. Yeah. And you know, and, and again, it wasn't God's will or that that the that Jerusalem end in destruction like no, that. No, but it he knew that it was coming he, because of the seeds that had been planted by the Jews. Well yeah, because over and, all and, of and their years. refusal to, to, to go that direction. I mean his his will would have been that no remember what he said that no man perishes. Right. You know, he would have been his will would have been that that they would have come into the new way of thinking right. to, to, to what Jesus was presenting. Because they were going to perish in this earth realm in this moment. Yeah. And so Robin, let's uh uh, let's get into some scriptures here. And as I was saying that, I understand that we have to make, we have to understand the historical aspect of things so that we uh, can make correct application of the scriptures. And, and we've been talking about that, who they were written to, what was the culture like, what was actually happening in the, in the time that it was, that it was right. being written. So Hebrews 1, 1 through 3, we said last week was a, a, a familiar last day scripture. And most of us read this like it's written to us in our moment, but it was written to Hebrews uh, 2,000 years ago. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the sons by... Uh, to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days. The writer of Hebrews, past tense, said that he was living in the last days. And, the, and has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Now, is Jesus still speaking today? Yeah, he's not speaking from a physical body looking at us. He was he's then, but us. now he's speaking out of us yes. to the world. You. He's speaking out of you and me. He's speaking yeah. out of us. He's still speaking, and he's still speaking from a place of sonship, from a place of God being father, God being a good father, not a taskmaster, not a taskmaster, not, not someone that is that is demanding performance in order to love us or demanding something us in order to love us. He is Jesus demonstrated that his love is completely unconditional and we're wall to wall love yeah. right and now that's who we are we might yes. not have awakened and, and it that, may not look like it yes and the people that are even acting out the things that you see in the earth they really are wall to wall love yes on the they, are. they just don't know who god is in them they right. do not know what they have and who how god looks at them and they haven't awakened to that but there is hope there is hope yeah. for change. So Jesus is the express image of God and so are you and I. Another last day scripture that we looked at last week, 1 John 2, 18, says, Little children, it is the last hour as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. So he was, John was saying that it is the last hour. In, in other words, it was the last moments before the last days of that old covenant system was going to end. It, yeah. All of the elements, the temple and all those things were going to be destroyed and it was going to cease. So Robin, Antichrist is not a person. It was a mindset. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And, and they were anti the view of the God that Christ brought on the scene. That he and revealed. revealed. Yeah. The view of a good God. Yeah. The view of a non-violent, non-angry, yeah. loving God. And that is what we still see anti-Christ mindset in the earth today. Right. That's what we see happening around us is an anti-love, anti-Christ mindset. But I have a hope yes. that as I grab a hold of that, as you grab a hold of that, that the, that is going to be what is going to bring change to yeah. this world Absolutely. is when we get a hold of the fact that of the, of the mindset that Christ brought on yeah. the scene. The unconditional love of God. Whenever you really begin to embrace the unconditional love of God, you cannot hold on Robin, to a lot of the doctrines and the things that we've held on yeah. to, we're going to have to at least give some things consideration that maybe we've been wrong. You can say it. You can say it. About so some things. Hard to say we're wrong sometimes. Maybe we need oh to let go gosh. of our pride and say, "Hey, we've been wrong about some yes. things. Maybe we haven't known everything. Maybe." Oh. Maybe there's a progression of God yeah. leading us into yeah. truth. There's a possibility yeah. of that that I see yeah. anyway in my life, in your life. I mean, and again, we have to face the reality that what we believe shapes our choices that we're making. Because you might say, oh, well, what's the big deal? It, it is, is a, a big, big deal. deal to believe and have the right view of God because we are impacted about how we think about ourselves when we by how we think that God views us. Yeah. And that, you know, even for those that might say that they're atheistic in their beliefs, to believe there is no God or no one helping you is, is to feel very alone right. and you feel like you have to control everything yourselves because there's no greater being out there and that in itself shapes and drives choices that are being made but man when you believe that God loves us yeah. and has a relationship with us and it's not based upon whether I'm thinking the right way right he, he's, he's in relationship with us even when we're not in relationship with Him. Even He is loving us and caring for us yeah. even when I don't understand and I'm not awakened to the fact that He loves us. I mean, it's just like my kids. I love them just like you as a parent. We love yeah. our kids whether they love us back or not. Right, it, Our love for them has zero to do with And God is far them. greater than oh you or I. Gosh. Yes. So there's a lot of things in Scripture, Robin, that we're going to have to look oh at through the eyes of love. And I don't worship the Bible. I respect the Bible. I honor the Bible. I teach the Bible. Yeah. But I understand that the Bible was written by men who were inspired of God to write down their story and their journey. Yep. And if we ever get a hold of that aspect of that, yep. then it will make us, yep. even this last days or new day, it will make us readjust our thinking yes. on some things yeah. and I believe that it will bring transformation and hope yeah and hope and comfort and peace and all those things that we need to walk out life in this earth yeah Robin listen you and I talked about this a lot the last couple of days an anti-christ and anti-love mindset uh, is is why all of the heartbreaking events are going on around yes. us yes. Yeah. And we've witnessed some pretty tragic things this week. We've we've come off of the coronavirus and things are kind of starting to turn around a little bit. And then we have the tragic death of George Floyd yeah. and then all of the riots that have followed. All of these things are tragic. Yeah. Uh, but my job as a watchman on the wall is to tell people that God is good, that you can repent. You can change your mind about how you view God. And once you begin to change your mind about how you view God, then you'll begin to change your mind how you view yourself and your actions will begin to reflect that. And then on top of that, you will begin to see other people differently. And if you treat yourself differently, then you'll begin to treat other people differently. Yeah. And that and, is powerful. And it's like, and, and it's, 
And it's like we said, love doesn't not take a stand for what's right. In fact, love, yeah. because it is love, does take a stand for what's right. But it's how we take that stand. It's not one that's out of anger or out of violence, but it's one that is out of compassion and value for people. Right. Value. And, yes. See, God values. God yeah. so loved the world. I preached a yeah. message a few years ago. God so loved the world. He so valued us. Yes. He's always valued us. Always valued us because we were created in his yeah. image. And and so uh, we have to understand that value that God has for every individual person on the planet. Yeah. There is no one outside of the value of God. And our performance doesn't change our value. I know no. that you keep saying that, but it's not transactional. It, God's value for a person isn't based upon their ability to make good choices. Does he want us to make good choices? But again, it's the mindset change that will begin to change the, our actions. So we can't, it's not about controlling actions um, and thinking that, that that is just beating someone, berating someone yeah. for their bad actions. It's about telling that person that they have value and that God believes yeah. that they have have value and have worth and out of that then change begins to come and then robin not only telling them that but then beginning to show them that through our oh, so response how and oh how our actions yes. and um and, and and we're not saying this is an easy thing to do no I mean, this this takes us partnering with God on the inside of us to do yep. this. And this takes us focusing um, continuously on the fact that God loves us yeah. and that God values us and that God values every human being on this planet. And and it's like, it is this constant reflection of this, this, this constant view of God. We have to measure everything back to Jesus. Jesus is our measure for how he treated every person. That he Robin, let, let me go as far to say this. Uh, God loves the police officer that killed Mr. Boyd. Yes. God loves every one of the rioters that are burning buildings. Yeah. There is no there is no difference in God's unconditional love towards us. Again, do we need to take a stand and get those things under control and Absolutely. help people, and people need to be held accountable yes. for the choices that they make. Yeah. But 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 in the midst of holding people accountable and and bringing order back, we have to still continue to love and that our motive has to be because we love and value people. So the church has to preach a message that will change the hearts of men. Yeah. And whenever I say hearts, I'm talking about the way people think our, our mindset. Our mindset. Yeah. Because you're still created in the image and the nature yeah. of God, even if you're doing things that aren't right. And how many of us Christians, since you've become a believer, how many of you have done something wrong? He well, who has no sin cast the first stone. Exactly. He who has no bad performance cast right. the first stone. And so we can't. We we have to we have to begin to look at how we think and how we view things, our perspective, yes. and we operate from that place. And I can zone in to who I am in Christ and let that flow out of me like rivers of living water that oh. will bring healing and wholeness yeah. yes. to myself and everyone around me, or I can just operate from a carnal mindset right. that produces yeah. death. And it goes to everything, whether it's correcting our children or whether it's dealing in, in my marriage relationships right. when we have conflict, because yeah. conflict happens. I mean, that's what yeah. we're seeing out, out in the world in this in, the, in an extreme way. But 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 when we when we deal with conflict and we deal and bring correction and we hold people accountable from a place of love and value for that person, it looks completely different. It still facilitates and allows God to help bring change. Yeah. But it's my motive is completely completely different in how I'm going to approach it yeah. because I'm going to make sure that I'm dealing with that person um, from a place that they are worthy yeah. and not shaming them, right? Yeah. not, 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 not um, holding them accountable just to bring shame to right. them, but holding them accountable, reminding them of who they are, Yeah, you know, of, of, that they are worthy. And Robin, the truth is that starts right here with you and in me, our in our family, right in the family, family room. Yes. That starts in, in our church our building, room, our yes. family that's a part of Turning right. Point Church. And, and some days we struggle with that, yes. guys. Some days we struggle. Yeah. Terry and I don't have this all down pat. No. We struggle with that sometimes. But but we are heading. It's, again, we know the direction that we need to head. Yeah. We know the path that we need to go down the, and where Jesus is pointing us. And that, and that hopefully like this next year, next week, the next day, we'll be farther down that path than we are today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Robin, how fitting today is Pentecost Sunday. 50 days after resurrection. Where they uh, really had a revelation of who God was on the inside, inside of them. And it come yeah. busting out oh on the day goodness. of Pentecost. Yeah. And so 
going back to our last days, I know we're not staying consistent with our, we are, but we're talking about what's going on in our because world it's today to because about, it's important. Because Terry, how doctrine is only as good as if we can apply it to yeah. make a difference in our everyday life. He Absolutely. wants just theology. Yeah. I don't want just theology. No. I want something that's, theology doesn't do any good I want if, it, if it's not applicable. I want something that I can really apply to, to my everyday life. So this brings us to another scripture we read last week out of Acts chapter 2. Then Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose it's only nine in the morning sounds like a little joy and a little peace yeah. and a little love Excitement. going on uh, no this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel that we read last yeah. week in the last day so Peter Peter believed he was living in the last days the writer of Hebrews believed he was living in the last days John believed he was living in the last hour of the last days yep. Amazing. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Robin, that is still perpetual today. God is still pouring his spirit out upon us. But it is it, the reality of that is it's coming out of us. The last days are the last days of yes. an old covenant that Joel was prophesying about he was prophesying about what the new day would yes. look like and they were experiencing the new day the new day was god pouring his spirit out upon all, all flesh. flesh not just the jews not just the jewish people they held that covenant and were very exclusive of letting the other well, people robin the, the 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 reality of the new man that Jesus created. He said there was no more Jew, no more Gentile, no more division, no more man or woman. I mean, there's no, no division, no black or white. Doesn't matter for purple or pink. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, there, there's no division yes. in the kingdom of God. Yes. And so we should perpetuate that. And the reality is, is that if I understood the new man, then I would treat my I would treat my wife well. I would treat my children well. I would treat the person that I work with well. But we're we're growing in this. Yes. yes. We're, it's a we're just it's a process that yep. we're understanding. Yeah. Yep. So it brings us to another scripture. I mean, Robin, if I would have read this ten years ago, I would have thought this was it. This was it, Myrtle. This is it. It's Myrtle. all over. <laughs> Uh, 2 Timothy 3.1 says out of the New American Standard Bible, but realize this, Paul's talking to Timothy, and he says, realize this, Timothy, that in the last days, difficult times will come. Yep. Matthew 24 says that there will be the days they were living in, that they were the worst days that the earth has ever seen. We think. We're living oh in difficult times. You historically but you're, look back at that. Look back oh at what has gosh. happened. We're living in great days. Oh. We're living in a new day. I know we have some problems and some yeah, issues. That's not the but I believe that. that a lot of those, Robin, are the result of what we think, what yeah. we speak, what we're releasing into the atmosphere, yeah. uh, in, into our earth realm, because we're the ones with dominion and authority in this realm. That's why we can't underestimate the power that we have within us to when we believe the right things and we start treating people the right way and we start acting out what we're believing and how powerful when we pray and we speak life into the earth. That's what I believe prayer. Prayer is about being in agreement with who God says we are and yeah. what God says is ours and that yes, he's already provided absolutely. for us. Yeah. And I believe when we begin to speak those things out into the earth, we it makes a difference. We cannot underestimate. I know that we might say, I'm just one person. We're just one family. But it's that one family at a time, one stone upon a stone, yeah. one one brick and one puzzle piece fitting together with each other. It makes a difference. You are making a difference. Yes. You are making yeah. a difference. We're making a difference Absolutely. with what we believe. It's yeah. so important. So these difficult life. times that we're living in are not the last days. No. And we're going to continue to look at, at different words that have been translated like in uh, Matthew 24, whenever in your King James it says the end of the world, but it was the end of an age. Age, age. The age of yeah. the old covenant. It's the Greek word aeon yeah. or ion. And so, but Robin, we're not living, we may be living in difficult times. Yeah. And Jesus even told the disciples, as in, in the book of John, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And I believe he's waiting on us 
to overcome the world, but not through violence and no. hatred not and anger. Not trying to control everybody. Not trying to control everybody and everything, but but loving people. Valuing people. Valuing people. Like God values us. And you say, well, Pastor Terry, are you sad? See, I'm sad today on one hand because of everything that I'm seeing, oh, yeah, because but I'm extremely hopeful and yes. joyful and peaceful, and I believe that transformation is coming. Yes. Otherwise, listen, if I didn't believe transformation was coming, I wouldn't be doing this today. I would be huddled up, or maybe, probably, most of you that know me, I would go fishing. You yeah, know but, what but I'm we saying? Believe but that, we believe. Oh my gosh, that 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 that, uh, that we can deal with the antichrist mindset. That we can have a love mindset. Yeah. We can have a pro-Christ mindset, right. the one that he modeled, and that what we're doing. And and you can't underestimate sharing with people at work and or with your neighbors and just sharing and talking about what God's doing in you, or just loving them and just caring about them and finding ways to share the love yeah. of Christ with them, doing good to the people that are around you, and how that is so powerful absolutely and, 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 yeah. and influencing our worlds yeah robin i want to uh jump over we've been reading out of luke 21 and and we didn't get to matthew again today but that's okay um we got lots of time don't we, we do lots have, of time we have time we have time but I want to remind you in verses 20 through 24 that we've read that Jesus said in verse 22, for these are the days of vengeance that all things which are written, and the only thing that was written was the Old Testament scrolls that they had in their hand, that all of the things in the Old Testament may be fulfilled. Now, I don't believe Jesus was a liar. He wasn't off a little bit. I believe Jesus was telling the truth. So he was saying that the days they were living in 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 uh, 70 AD and around that time were the days of vengeance. And so we're going to read out of Matthew 23 uh, next week, but I want to read Robin a little bit further down uh, from out of Luke here, okay. Luke uh, 21 verses 29 through 33. Then Jesus spoke a parable, and by the way, he always spoke in parable form. A picture look, is worth a thousand words. Look yeah. at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that the summer is near. Near. So as Jesus was speaking, yeah. he was saying these events are near. The book of Revelation yeah. says a couple of different times these things must shortly come to pass. Right. Not 2,000 years into the future, but in their moment, yep. in their moment. Uh, Robin, I heard Lynn Hiles say that in a lot of our liberal uh, theological schools, that they, they don't hold much uh, uh, understanding uh, or they don't hold much honor to what Jesus said because a lot of them say that he was a false prophet because what he prophesied didn't come to pass in the moment that he said. But I'm telling you it that it did. Jesus said the sum summer is near whenever you see the fig tree. And the fig tree is Israel. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the days ahead. It's so, symbolic. Signs and, they, he talked in, sign, in symbol, signs symbols. And symbols. Yeah. yeah. So you also see when you see these things happening, no Know that the kingdom of God is near. Jesus kept telling the Jews the kingdom of God is near. Matter of fact, he told them the kingdom of God is within you. That's how close yeah. it was. It's not 2,000 years into your future. And this is the key words here, Robin, as we start coming into a close today. Assuredly, Jesus says, man, he says, take you better perk your ears up and listen to what I'm saying. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation of the fig tree that was alive in his moment, the, this generation, this generation, and Jesus uses that terminology, I believe, 17 times in the Gospels, and it's never talking about today in 2020. It's talking about in 70 AD, in that generation yeah. that was alive, 40 years after the resurrection and Pentecost and all of that, 40 years, that entire Jewish system came to a halt. 
It will stop. Jesus stopped all that. So it says this generation will by no means pass away till all of these things take place. Maybe a lot of things that we've said is in our moment and in our future isn't in our moment and in our future, but it's in our past. And maybe because we've taught these things are in our moment and in our future, maybe that's why we've got going on what we've got going on uh, around us because a lot of times we believe that like, like we said <laughs> our choices shape our belief systems yes. shape the choices that um that bring us into to our future yeah we are making decisions and even just speaking things that that we just bring into into being because we have power in our words and god wants us to use our words to speak truth yeah and and you know that fi- i just love that the fig tree represents the old covenant the yeah. old way of looking at god and yeah. when we don't have a correct way of looking at god it produces death in our lives it produces an un- um things that do not produce life okay robin and, and i i'm totally getting off here but that fig tree goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden whenever Adam and Eve tried to cover themselves up. Yeah. They were made in the image and likeness of God, yeah. but they started operating within a mindset, within an antichrist system at that moment, a performance system all the way back in the garden. They didn't believe God loved them. He thought he was, I mean, they thought he was holding out on them. He, I mean, he didn't. Well, Eve, not Eve thought if she love. took, if Adam and Eve thought if they partook of the fruit, the message, not a literal apple or that's another old story in itself but they partook of a thought process yeah. that said that they were not like god but, but was, they were like god but there was something they had to do to become worthy to be like god but they were like god they were like god. yeah yeah so uh, so robin that goes on to say here in verse 33 so by by no means will this this these things will take place in that generation then the next verse see i because i didn't understand um, symbolism metaphors yeah. uh i didn't understand the parabolic meanings of things whenever i would read this next scripture i would my mind would go into overdrive because i never had anybody really tell me what this meant it says heaven and earth will pass away and i always thought that was a global in, situation the end the of the physical, world the physical because end. that's what yeah. we were taught but that's not what that means jesus said heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away so robin what is heaven and earth heaven and earth is a jewish idiom referring to the jewish temple and their beliefs about god it was the it was not the physical heaven. They refer to their temple and and their, that. It was their whole way of life. Yes. Their whole way of life was surrounded heaven. around the animal sacrifices, feast days, all of those things. So heaven and earth represented the Jewish temple and their belief systems and everything that that had to do with their belief systems. And we're going to go into, I promise, next week we will go into Matthew 23 and 24. But Jesus was saying that the temple in Matthew 24, there would not be one stone left upon another. So he was saying heaven and earth, that temple system, that entire structure of the fig tree is going to be removed so that the new covenant can be the completely established. Day. The, new day. the new day. And what we want to challenge you today is do you have any of that old um fig tree left in your thinking are we, are, oh, do we have any of that old covenant belief system left in our thinking is there anything that we have left in us that just per, that produces anger yeah. i'm telling you if there's something in us that produces anger we find ourselves struggling with anger and fear and anxiety yeah. then we have to ask ourselves do we have some belief systems that are in us that are still attached to a transactional performance based view of god that that we believe somehow that there's something that we have to do like Adam and Eve did to believe that to be worthy because yeah. that's an antichrist because Christ is about love and yeah. he came to on the scene to absolutely show his unconditional love for us and that we are worthy not based absolutely. upon any transaction or performance that we could yeah. do for him there was not one thing that we had to do to get him to love us or put value on us more and it's out of that mindset having that right mindset that we're going to begin to shape a future that has hope yeah. on the inside of it. It has hope in it. And you might say, well, Pastor Terry, you're shaking my world up. Listen, their world was shaken up by what Jesus was bringing to them. He was yeah. bringing them 
into a sonship system, yep. a system of daddy God, father oh, God. Oh my goodness, yes. Man, that, that, that it was shaking them up. And if we have any parts, like Robin said, of that old fig tree system in our mind, if you have faith in God, you'll say to that mountain, that belief system, yeah. <laughs> be removed and be cast into the sea, yeah. not a literal sea. It's talking about unregenerate humanity. So anyway. But we're going to have to let go of control. Yeah. We're going to have to let go of, of the things that we've held on to that, that we felt like have like protected us and felt like that have been our foundation. But how's that working for us? We yeah. have to say, if, because if it's producing fear and love and ang or fear and anger and not producing love and peace and healthy relationships and, and you know, then we have to ask ourselves, are we believing the right things? Right. Yeah. You know, and, and what I want to believe is something that produces hope and peace in my life and something that I can hang on to and grab on to yeah. in the middle of things that are feel outside of control in my life that I feel like I can trust God and then I can respond to what's happening in my world in the right way. Right. You know, just like Jesus did. Robin, one more scripture and then we're going to close it out here. Romans 12, 2, which that is probably one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible. Uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to this world. See, I used to think that uh, that it was talking about our the the uh, our day because I would read this like it was written to me, but this wasn't written to me. What he was talking about, he was talking about during that age of the law. He said, "Don't be conformed to this age." That age. Now, can we make application to our day? Of course Absolutely. we can. But yeah. it was talking about that God did not want them to be conformed to the age of that old covenant system. He wanted them released out of it, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by coming into a new covenant, sonship, Father God mindset that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The old covenant was vanishing away quickly, Hebrews says, yeah. and the new covenant was going to be preeminent. Unfortunately, here we are in 2020 and, and a lot of us have not understood that that old covenant has completely passed away yeah. in all aspects of it. We have a lot of, a lot of people who haven't awakened to who God really is, the right view of God, and having awakened to who they are and how God views them, having awakened to how God views other people. Yeah. And you know, but but we have hope. Yeah. You know, we have we have hope. The Bible says that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus' way of thinking and living and what he represents. Not through is force. True. But not not through force. Not but through, through unforced rhythms of grace. Oh, yes. Yeah. He does never put anything ill fitting on us. He's patient. He is patient. Yeah. He's getting in the box of every person, so regardless of whether they believe the right things or not. He's in our box with us, whether we whether we've got it all right or not, and so that he can have relationship. Because it's, the Bible says it's the love of God that draws men to repentance, brings a change of mind, yeah. a change of yeah, thinking. Yeah, absolutely. It yeah. is. We are in that new day, Terry. We are in that new day. We are in a new day. We are not in the last days. It doesn't matter what's happening around us. We are living in a new day, a new way of thinking about God. A time of restoration. We're living yeah. in a time of correction. We're living in a time of shaking. But I believe all this shaking is going to bring correction that will cause us to live our days like the days of heaven on earth. But the th shaking is in our mindsets. It is. It's in, it's in our mindsets. And, yeah. the, and the things that we see that, that are ugly and, and, and violent around us are because our mindsets haven't been shaken yet, haven't yeah. lined up with the, they are still operating in an antichrist mindset, yeah. anti-love mindset. Yeah. Yeah, we you, are living in a new day. So do you want to you wanna read yeah, that? Yeah, Terry and I, as we were kind of talking about what we were going to talk about today in the light of everything, man, we thought these scriptures were so, so powerful because changing the hearts and minds of men is what's going to bring an end to the right. hatred and yeah, anger. Yeah, absolutely. Change will never come through trying to control behavior. Change only comes from the inside out. Changing the way we see God changes the way I see myself, the way you see yourself. And there's and power in the gospel of oh. the kingdom, the good news. Yeah. And then it's going to change the way we see others. So let's, let's read these scriptures. This is out of the New King James Version. This is Romans chapter 12. We're going to read verses 9 through 10, then verses 16 through 21. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. 
Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another. Whoa. With brotherly love. Wow. In honor, giving in preference honor. to one another. Honor. Yeah. That is that is key, Robin. Yeah. Be the same mind of the be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no evil for evil. Now, if God expects that out of us, then God is like that. Oh my goodness, He is. He, he doesn't repay evil no. for evil, so that's going to shake our doctrines yeah. right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. You know what, Robin? Uh, one translation I read, it says, if it is possible, as much as, 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 uh, as much as he lives in you, live peaceably with all men. And he lives in us. Yes. We might not be awakened yeah. to the fact that he lives in us, but he lives in us. Yeah. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place. But rather give place to wrath, for it is written, "Vengeance is mine; I will repay," says the Lord. And remember what we talked about: wrath and vengeance is not what we thought it was. Uh, Here's the next statement: is God's retaliation right, right. here? Here because it is. Because wrath is about passion, right? And, and responding in passion. Here's what it is. Therefore, if you love your enemy, if your enemy is hungry feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. On his soul, on his mind, yes. on his thinking, on his emotions. I mean, think about what that says. But see, if you don't read that right, beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath. Give place to God's passion. Wrath is passion, a passionate expression. Yes. For it is written, vengeance is mine. And what was God's vengeance? What did he model to us on the cross? To lay down his life. Yes. His response to man's anger was to give complete, give his whole, give his life. And and part of that is if your enemy is hungry, really we shouldn't even have an enemy mindset. Nobody should be our enemy. Yeah. But if someone's coming against you, yes. if someone is coming against this you, this says feed him. Feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. And fire is cleansing. Fire is God not is like an all consuming evil or fire. No. He is, he's coming in to change and purify and get rid of yes. all of the wrong yes. thinking. What that will do is, is it helps facilitate God and then being able to see what God is really like through us. Through us. Through us. Do not overcome evil. Evil by evil, but overcome evil with, with good. good. Uh, having a correct view of God changes everything. Okay, Robin, we're going to go into part four next week, and I guarantee you we're going to go into Matthew 23. Oh, uh, well, we'll but, get there when we get there. Yeah. But but it, because it is just so important, and we just wanted to so today take application to what we've been talking about, yeah. to, to what we're experiencing in our world right now. And give you hope. Yes, we have hope. We have we, it doesn't have to be this way. I don't. I don't believe that we have to live like this. Yeah, but you know what? We have hope that as that God changes us one life at a time. Yeah, absolutely. And that we want to. We want to leave you today with hope that you have within you the ability to let Christ flow out of you because of what you're experiencing in your relationship with him. Yes. So today, let t today, this week, let God love you so that you can love other people. Yeah. So if you're struggling with yourself, if you're struggling with feeling worthy yourself, I want to remind you, you are worthy. Yeah. And, and, and as you grab a hold and let the love of God really and uh, affect your life and you embrace it for you and let yeah. you change the way you feel about you, then you are going to find it much easier and much this is going to be like the unforced rhythms of grace are going to come in and it's going to be allow you to love other people the absolutely right way. you know yeah. and that god loves us yeah. listen we love you so much and we are, are going to be making some announcements this week um, about the reopening of face-to-face -face services um, our target goal is to do is, is father's day june, june 21st. 21st it's the start of phase three so unless something happens between now and then that would change that that's our target goal um to is to start at 
the beginning of phase three in the Springfield Green County area. And we want to, um, we'll be making some announcements with some more details about that. So be watching for that. But anyway, we love you and care about you. We want to remind you that we exist as a church family. So we want to encourage you to give online um, and so that we can continue to exist together. And so we, um, you can give online by um, following the link on the Facebook page, as well as going to the church website. You can um, give online there as well. We love you. We love you. We appreciate you. And listen, this week, if fear tries to rise up on the inside of you, you just remind yourself that God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but yes. power, love, and of a sound mind, that what we have on the inside of us is what the world needs and will make a change. It will. We are world changers yes. because we are going to model the love of God. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Love you guys. See you soon.